Now, Mr. Strzok was testifying yesterday, and I'm trying to put aside all the craziness in terms of the questioning and the yelling and the screaming. It was incredible to see, for instance, the Democrats applauding Mr. Strzok. He'd been escorted out of the FBI. The IG found his testimony to be unpersuasive and uh, said that his conduct really brought disrepute uh, upon the entire agency and was completely at odds with the ethics as, as far as they went at the FBI and Justice Department. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, it becomes a partisan battle uh, in Congress. So that's why it's up to Judicial Watch and you, honest viewers, to kind of cut through it all and figure out what, what really went on. So Peter Strzok confirmed he wrote the tax messages. Uh, he says they weren't indications of bias. Obviously, that's not believable. And, but he did say that the documents or the bias didn't impact his investigation. Well, I don't think that's persuasive at all. Indeed, it wasn't persuasive to the IG. It wasn't persuasive to even Robert Mueller, who removed Mr. Strzok from uh, the Mueller Russia investigation uh, once these text messages became known within the department. Uh, and uh, of course, Mueller hid that from the American people for four months. So now we know what Mr. Strzok did. You can see from his testimony yesterday, he still hates President Trump. Uh, he's not a terribly credible witness in my estimation. But what do you do about it? What do we do about it? I mean, yesterday there was a lot of yelling about whether his emails or text messages demonstrated bias. Well, they didn't demonstrate bias, they demonstrated corruption. This man was running the Clinton email investigation, and he was running the Russia Trump investigation. The IG saw his refusal to act quickly on the investigation into the Wiener laptop emails, which contained Clinton emails that they found in September 2016. They sat on that for a month. And the, he, the IG thought that Strzok's pro-Trump or anti-Trump bias impacted his handling of that issue because he was focused and hyper-focused on getting Trump at that time, talking about impeachment almost, I think, the day after Mueller was appointed. So uh, now Congress makes, likes, to, likes to hold hearings, likes to hold hearings, but the hearings don't often amount to much because of the process, because of the way, uh, because, of the, um, because of the way the hearings are conducted. Now, you see these hearings and you say, well, that's the way it's always done. No, it's not the way it's always done. Back in the day, uh, and not all uh, former congressional practices need to be revived because some of them weren't good, but in this case, they were good. And they used to have on major hearings, you would have a minority counsel and a majority counsel, basically a lawyer whose only job was to investigate the issue at hand and to question the witness on behalf of the committee. So the Republicans would have their counsel answer, ask questions of the witness, and the Democrats or the minority, uh, oftentimes back then it was the Republicans who were in the minority, would have their counsel answer questions. And sometimes the senior members of the committee, the, uh, the chairman and the ranking member would ask questions as well, but you didn't have the questions divvied up in these five minute ridiculous increments that we saw yesterday, which as you see, is no way to conduct a hearing, no way to conduct an inquiry on behalf of the public interest. Uh, there are some members who know what they're doing, there are some who don't, and that goes for both sides of the aisle. And uh, Mr. Strzok uh, deserved uh, uh, to be questioned in a serious way uh, because of his misconduct was so egregious. And so the circus of the hearing detracted from the corruption that is at issue, which is that the FBI and Peter Strzok being a symptom of that, and the Justice Department under Obama were misused to target President Obama and Hillary Clinton's political opposition, namely Donald Trump. So you've got this circus atmosphere that distracts from the outrageous corruption at the Justice Department and FBI. So we have this hearing, and what was the goal of the hearing? I don't know what the goal of the hearing was. If I were running the hearing, I would think, well, okay, we already know he wrote the text messages. Uh, we already know from the pre-interview, they did a deposition of him, they questioned him beforehand behind closed doors that he was going to say what he said, which is that the, the, uh, you can't believe his text messages 
that talked about the investigation in a biased way biased the investigation. So what do you do? Well, you tie the text messages to specific acts in the investigation that went either for or against his political targets or friends. So with Hillary Clinton, we know the FBI generally bent over backwards to protect her. And with uh, President Trump, we know there was this uh, improper targeting and over the top improper use of FISA warrants and spies and things like that. Uh, the other big news in the hearing yesterday was that the FBI, on behalf of Robert Mueller, suppressed many of the questions about key issues related to the Russia investigation. But no good basis. So again, Robert Mueller and the FBI are protecting Strzok protecting the Obama Justice Department, the Obama FBI, and all the attendant corruption targeting Trump. So that's the big news yesterday. And the other big news is that Mr. Mueller uh, didn't want, uh, really didn't question Mr. Strzok, at least according to Mr. Strzok. When the text messages came out, he was just removed. Mueller never asked him anything about what was in them. So if I were Congress, I would bring Mr. Mueller in to testify. It's well past time that he testify about the way his operation is being run, about its corrupt formation, as evidenced by Peter Strzok's text messages with his girlfriend, Lisa Page, who supposedly is being deposed right now. I'd ask him about his budget. I'd ask him about his hires, demonstrating bias. Do you know that Mr. Mueller just hired four more lawyers, not one of whom was a registered Republican? We do know one of them, I think, a Mr. Kravis, is a, a new hire of Mueller. He worked uh, was, as a political appointee in the Obama White House Counsel's Office. So if he's looking to reassure sensible Americans who want an investigation that is not only free from bias, but even the appearance of bias, as Mr. Strzok might like to say, why is he hiring all these Democrat partisans to target President Trump? with this gargantuan investigation. Uh, so Mr. Mueller needs to be brought in to testify. And then secondly, we learn further that um, about this KG, uh, this, this DNC Clinton dossier. Of course, the FBI suppressed questions about that dossier, which was improperly used to get a spy warrant on Donald Trump. So there you've got the deep state FBI, Christopher Wray, the president's appointee at the FBI, who answers to Rod Rosenstein and Jeff Sessions, all covering up and protecting Mr. Strzok from having to answer questions about that corruption. But we learned that key elements of that dossier were uh, funneled to Mr. Strzok from Bruce Orr, whose wife worked for Fusion GPS Nellie Orr, which Judicial Watch has multiple lawsuits on, trying to get information about that, despite stonewalling from, Congress, uh, from the Justice Department and FBI. So talk about an inside job. You had this Democrat Clinton v vendor, again, Fusion GPS hired by Hillary Clinton, Democratic National Committee to dig up dirt on Donald Trump. They worked with Russian intelligence sources and who knows who else to target Trump. And they laundered it into the FBI and DOJ and we had confirmation that it was laundered through the spouse of one of the Fusion GPS employees. Talk about corruption. Why on earth is the Mueller operation allowed to continue in light of the nascent corruption that was behind uh, its, the focus of its investigation? The very reason for being was to target Russia collusion between a Trump, uh, uh, the Trump campaign, uh, the collusion between Trump and Russia. There's no evidence of that. The only evidence that's been generated has been corruptly generated and therefore can't be trusted. But this Justice Department allows the Mueller train to keep on going forward. 